Well, none of this traffic will go through the neighborhood onto that street. All of our traffic goes out to Harris Boulevard. And I, I just want to say one thing when I was with the city. This this is a required entrance into our property. This has nothing to do with Alvin Moore Road, okay? We can't come through this townhome project. We, they, they wanted us to have a, a live entrance coming through here. This road, they have you stub out for future development, and that the guys next door left that project, so that project is it was under contract, is out of contract, because they called me. So this is stub for the future development of this property, but there's no thoroughfares involved with this project. Okay, we're not, the, tra the traffic uh, has come back under, our analysis has come back, the engineering analysis has come back, traffic impacts are lower than okay. expected there. So, I just wanted to make sure the thoroughfare road is a, something we, we have nothing to do with with this project. That was our entrance off of the WT Harris. Are they requiring the light? City calls that no. a net no. building no. green. That's why it's on the it's more like the I see, I see lots of hands. Wait a minute. Yeah, let me do two more minutes and then it, from that point on, it's, it's all of y'all, okay? Um, one, of the, one of the things about this, and again, I, I think this is a, this is a unique site. We're starting with a unique site. Y'all are all familiar with it. Um, is without something to come along and, work, and do something with this land, it's just going to sit there. It will continue to have the rats and it will continue to leach pollutants into the groundwater and it will continue to have bad soil, all of which is going to have to be managed by somebody. Keith has already started the process with the brownfield folks to begin to do what he has to do to mitigate the, the the bad part about the property. That is a cost that most developers don't have to deal with. Um, it is, I think it's a benefit to the community. That sounds very self-serving to say that, but to have somebody step up and be willing to take that on is kind of unusual. A lot of people will go for an easier deal where they don't have to worry about that stuff. Or as you say, just leave it thank it. Yeah, that is somebody else's problem. So I find it unique and and I think it's kind of cool that someone is here to say, all right, we're going to take this, we're going to, we're going to clean this up and then put a new development here, which adds value to the community. So that's really all I wanted to say about that. And I know there are a lot of questions. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I've, I've lived out in Lake Park for 50 years. But I just have a question. Uh, at one time, they said there was a buffer zone right. behind yeah. the house. Is, yep. is that still there? Yep. And up in this area, there's a lot of trees. As you go further down the property line, there's fewer and fewer trees. Um, we'll have a buffer requirement along that property line. Um, it's at least 50 feet. I think we have made the final determination. But with all those trees are all already there, it's a lot cheaper to leave them than it is to tear them down and replant them. And in places where there are not enough trees, to meet the buffer requirement, you have to go in and add not just trees, but also shrubs, mixed, you know, pines and, and oaks and different <laughs> mixtures so it looks like a natural forest. And so that's all along this edge. Anywhere we adjoin existing single family, even up here, this is actually zoned multifamily, but it's developed as single family. So our buffer starts up here and goes all the way around the site where we adjoin any existing residences. How many acres? Yeah, I believe it's 47. 27 grand. Oh, my, my property is John Bay. Yes, sir. Now, he's said, mall, you wouldn't have to do all that. <laughs> you know? What do we know at East and Mall? Nothing. I'll tell you now. Multiple families come multiple crimes. You can bet your life on that. Yeah, I, you heard it from Hank Seven. <laughs> I'm through with it. <laughs> uh, let me ask, uh, there's this lady, this lady, that lady, this lady. If I can remember. <laughs> okay, we were talking 233 units, and you said there were, or 288 units, I'm sorry. And there would be an exit off onto W.T. Harris, correct? Yes, yes ma'am. Two weeks ago, when the rezoning 
meeting, there are 180 units proposed that's going to have an egress out on Harris Boulevard. Just the Where way. are these people going? You're saying your traffic study shows it's low. They're saying their stack traffic study shows it low. Mm -hmm. Us who drive it every day it's not low. know better. <laughs> it's not low. Does anybody know the case number of that other case? If you went to their meeting, yeah. Does anybody know the case number? Because I'd like to look that up. Yeah, I can get that for you. Thank you. Where is that? Okay, this lady. Between Harris and Harris. Lawyers. Lawyers. Yeah. 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 The old food line. Just south of Mount Mount. I'm at the land. There's a lot of traps out there. And uh, I'm also on the board. We've had so <coughs> quite a few accidents in that area. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Where cars come into speed zone. Yeah. So much traffic, certain times of the day you cannot get out. Mm -hmm. We've had, we put in a uh, request to the city to do something because we've had, and it's on record, we have an extremely high level of cars coming from Albemarle, Paso, mm -hmm. that literally jumps the sidewalk and rolls into the sun. Mm -hmm. That's no good. That's no good. Yeah. We've had one incident where a car would literally went into the one that's back. In our kitchen. So that's a big issue there, and that's one of my questions. Where is all this traffic? You said this is going to have an exit out onto WT Harris? There's, there's one that will use Delta Landing, which was built to service this property. Yeah. And then we have another access point that will be somewhere along this part of Harris Boulevard. Right. If it's on our property frontage, it'll most likely be limited to right in and right out. If we could acquire a little piece of land down here, then we can come out and make it connect where there's already where there's another median road. <laughs> well, something which, has to which be done. Which is another place that people can make their turning movements and not be all over. Yeah, something place. has to be done there because we are the only interest into us is W.T. Harris, the Delta Road, mm -hmm. and then into the land. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's always huge blockers of traffic mm -hmm. here. You know, and uh, I was sent on a mission to find out. On a mission. <laughs> 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 you just want to find out. And you're going to find out. <laughs> to find out what is going to be done. We have also requested a stoplight. Mm -hmm. But it was told because we live in the center of two big major intersections. They said no. So there's times when most time is high traffic, is work traffic, mornings, lunchtime, evening. If I'm going out, I have to make a right, I have to come up to this church and I have to U-turn. Most of us always do. Just like that young lady said over there, we live there. Traffic is horrendous. Mm -hmm. Now you put in, <laughs> this is a good thing, but how is it going to affect us? Because I think, other than a few houses on the opposite side, I think we are the closest community to. You are. You are. And we already have a trouble. Yeah. I, I will tell you there's, there's a history of, I mean, when I, Literally, when I lived in Idlewild Wild Farms, it was when they were making the improvements to create Harris Boulevard mm -hmm. from Idlewild Wild up to Albemarle mm -hmm. and to the old Laurie Road connector. You know, they put a, they yeah. put a light there. Yeah. That, well, that was between the two big intersections at Albemarle and, and Idlewild. Wild. Yeah. And then later they came back and put another one in. Well, that helped. And, it, and, it, and it I think really it helped. does help, but this, those are state roads. This, yeah. The state. These are on what they call the state system. Some of the roads in the city, the big ones like this, are maintained by NCDOT. The smaller roads are maintained by the city of Charlotte. To put a signal with this location, there are things called warrants. And there's a whole list of them. And you have to meet a certain number of these warrants. In other words, numbers of turning movements, numbers of accidents, yeah. total vehicle count. I mean, there's a lot of things that have to be met before NCDOT would allow a signal to be installed. Even if everybody, you know, passed around yeah. the piggy bank and you could pay for it. Yeah. Um, there are rules that they follow for themselves to decide where you can put one and where you can't. I agree with you. 
I think with the church across the street and with the, the development of this site and with all the community that's already there, yeah. you know, I'm looking, this is an urban, this area is becoming urbanized. And it's not so unusual to have more signals in an urban environment than you have in a suburban environment. Yeah. And CDOT is focused on moving traffic. That's that's their deal. And well, we're all glad that they are. Yeah. But every time you put up a stoplight, you interrupt the flow of traffic. Oh, I know. And that's why they're so guarded against wanting to do something like that. Well, that's understandable. And we, we've met with uh, some people that came out and met with the board. What we kind of re requested was a guardrail. That's a long, sweet, soft curve. <coughs> By the time people get to this curve, the speed limit needs to be changed there. Because they're already at the 40 miles an hour and they're coming in too fast. That's why they jump the sidewalk, because it's, especially on heavy rain, mm -hmm. they jump the sidewalk and they literally land into the property there. I mm -hmm. feel sorry for all the people on that line. Well, I mean, that's certainly something, I'm, I'm writing all this down, and that's certainly yes. something that I'll pass along to the city transportation staff. There's a big difference in putting up a guardrail and putting up a signal. Yeah, I know. We understand about the signal because the two big, you know, Pickle Grove Road and Albemarle Road, big intersections. That we understand that, but now we got to have we're going to have excessive amount of traffic, where it's hard to even make a right turn into the lane because they move too fast. I hear so you. they I need understand. to change the speed limit zone there, and <clears throat> guardrail will help. Got it. Maybe they need to Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the yeah, that that I'm sorry. Uh, I wanted to ask you about what you'll be charging for rents <coughs> and how many one bedrooms, how many two bedrooms, how many three bedrooms, and so forth. I, I, I never want to <coughs> tell my client how to do their business, but I expect the answer to your first question is as much as we can possibly get in terms of the rent. Do you want to talk a little bit about the unit mix? Yes. Um, I mean, as we understand it at this point. As, as for the rents, we pretty much run the numbers of what our competitors are that are 20 and 30 year old properties. So we're going to be fairly close, but again, the market will drive where our rents are. If anything, they're going to reduce some of their rents to help folks. Um, but again, I don't think anything's been built in this area for 25 years. And so, but from the rents that the uh, surrounding apartments are currently charging, we kind of use that number for brand new product. What was that number? Um, yeah, I don't want to quote any numbers right now, but mm -hmm. there's a so per these, square foot number. These could be thousand. low income apartments, basically. Mm -hmm. These are apartments. But they could be low income apartments and the, not market rate. These are market rate apartments. We, there's but no you way don't know I can, the market rate. Pardon? Market rate? Is the dollar ten a foot, dollar five, ten to fifteen like per foot? Um, we are at 124. You are? I mean, no, not, not well, me, but on this side of town, okay. the rents have gone up. We're about a dollar okay. twenty-four cents. Well, that's good we weren't targeting a dollar twenty-four, so that's, that's great, great news. news. But wherever we are, if anything, they're going to lower their rents a little bit to, to retain that's people. That's not what we want. Okay. Well, we, that's we're we're going to have market rate rents. And there's, it's, it's, you know, there's, it's there's going to be. That, 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 Keith does about setting his rents that tells other people what to do. I'm, right. This is interesting we, that the, the rents are actually going up. Oh, oh, they they way up. Up. oh I see. Okay. The average, I, I, I asked what you were Okay, let's, 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 stay on, let's stay on this one, let's stay on this one I, question. Just, just to finish the unit mix, it's going to be one bedroom, two bedrooms, and uh, three bedrooms potentially. Uh, that mix they're still working on. I have a company, pretty large company, that will be managing this, and um, they kind of guide us on the mix. It will be about 30 to 43 bedrooms, probably around 30, um, and then uh, a lot of ones and twos for the remainder. I talked to a real estate agent today who researched it for us, and, and she said the average apartment, I go to all of them together, in Charlotte is $1,100 mm -hmm. a month average. Right. How close are you going to be to that? Under that, from the information I have today, but the cost of construction has gone up pretty high, so it's a math equation for what we're doing. We want to build a beautiful product, we'll clean this site up, um, but it's it's market driven. This product may be here in a year and a half, two years, so 
I don't know where it will be, and I don't want to guess. We're hoping it keeps driving up. And yes, you had a great point. We'll set the rents as high as we can, bring in great people, and and keep keep everybody surrounding us. But that's not a question that I would get into. We were just mirroring our our numbers off of what's there. We'll put it a touch higher for a brand new building. So, so do you know the cost of construction? Of course you do. Yeah. So I, mean, you, so you I can't tell you for I can tell you for other projects we're doing. Yes, I do. So you know how much it's going to cost, but you're going to go into this not knowing what you're going to get out of it. Uh, we have an idea, a budget number, what it will cost to build in a year after we get through the process. This is a pretty tedious process we're going through. Market conditions change, interest rates go up, there's just a lot involved. We have an idea of what it's going to cost to build a unit here, an average. And it can range from uh, 130 to 135,000 for uh, an apartment. So um, we're seeing cost on the board. Charlotte is more expensive to build in than Raleigh and Wilmington. I can say that. Um, and so, but there'll be a mix. We're going to charge whatever market rates will allow. And um, we'll show you later on the, the product we're looking to do. But that, I hope that answers your questions on the, the rents and the, the mix. But, um, and like I said, I don't know if everybody was here. Here's my card. Y'all can call me or email me with your with any concerns. Let me come. This lady is next. And now, we'll, if you want some more data from us. Yes, ma'am. Three questions. Yes, ma'am. How big is the buffer going to be between his property and mine? Uh, is there going to be a fence? And what about the helicopter that land? I think the helicopters that land there are the city helicopters. Yeah, they're police they, they department. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know still, I didn't know have space so they can no. see them. No, no, no. Is no. no. okay. that a good thing? Yes. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, let me have, the buffer, I believe that on the plan right now it's showing us 50 feet. I know that we've got to go back and make sure that we have it all the way around. Put it down on this end, we don't show it. Okay. So we're going to have to put it back on here like it's supposed to be. Okay. Um, and the buffer is composed of existing trees as far as they go, and then where the trees stop or they're thin, then we have to plant additional trees in, in that area. Um, we haven't talked about a fence. Um, are you talking about like a security fence or a... Something that, that separates me from them. Is that our property from his property? We have a problem now with people cutting our yard in the back all the time of night and day. And for more people coming in, it's going to be a lot of problems. I mean, coming across this property? Is it yeah, the uh, uh, back property uh, from, from the, the airport. Some, 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 some of the people that stay on this side are trying to get, get the apple or whatever they want. They come to our backyard. And is there anything that you're going to put that is to prevent this? Um, we don't show a fence there now, but I think we're going to go back and look and see if we can put a fence there that will be that will get the job done. If there's people that are already coming through the neighborhood from somewhere else. They're coming from the area. Are they coming, the coming across the airport? They're coming their from property. Yeah, they're coming through the woods. Okay, okay. all right. That's, that's what I'm just trying to, yeah. just trying to yeah. get a sense of yeah. But what's happening now? Right. They're coming across the airport property. Okay. And it's nothing to look up to see somebody coming up behind someone's home that doesn't live there. Right. Okay. You have lots of pool parties, whether you want to No, and keep in mind that the landing originally was built for independent seniors and professional <coughs> people. So there is no playgrounds, there's no, no kid-friendly stuff. Our pool is very vulnerable. So if they got their own, that helps. 
Okay. Yes, okay. it depends on the other two. The other two. The second question is, I am I'm kind of not from North Carolina, but been here for a while. I'm not sure about what you mean about mixed multifamily. What does that mean? Is that how all houses blend? I, I think from? I think the the question was about unit mix, and well, that's that what means I that there are one say. bedroom units. How okay. many one bedroom units? How many two bedroom units? How many three bedroom units? And when you say a unit, you're saying apartment. Yes, okay. three, a three bedroom apartment versus a one bedroom apartment. They're problem. all apartments. They're all apartments. Three stories. Uh, okay. no, I, than three no peak, uh, 36 no three bedroom apartments from where we are at today. And then a, a good amount of two bedroom apartments. And then some, some one bedroom. Some, whoever mentioned the rent numbers here, yeah, it's $1.17 a foot in that market, 1095 a month is the average right now. And so, uh, and there's a need for two bedroom apartments according to some of the studies that you know, so the bottom line is they all we'll get the yeah, average square footage. Yeah, I don't, I don't have a question, but I wanted to point out that the apartment uh, development uh, on the other side of the uh, Almaro, on the other side of Almaro, yeah, right, right across the street from the K, uh, Kmart grocery store, okay, they had Walmart, 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 Walmart. Okay. Uh, they, uh, much of that being, and one of the complaints there was. That they didn't have a playground area. Was that yeah. the was that the new one that yeah. mm -hmm. this lady was talking about? Right. Okay. Right. 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 The new zoning they had a playground area. It was postage stamp. They had a playground area. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. no, please. It's off W T Harris that we were talking. Okay. About. Yes, sir. Uh, as far as the soil contamination and getting rid of the asbestos and everything, is your uh, developer going to try to get a tax abatement for that through the city? There's, you can get a little bit of tax credits um, and uh, through the city on some tax stuff. Um, and per, but that's once you get into the program and you go through the uh, GeoCentech. It's my environmental, they're international environmental consultants. They're working with me on this. So I don't get into all the taxes, laws, nor am I an attorney. Okay. Right, I understand but that. But we can certainly get, uh, we don't even know where they are today because we don't have values yet. Um, but we're going to come in here and remediate, go through the brownfield program, which we were accepted. I'm pretty aggressive right now because I'm, I'm, I've started that process as well. It's a nine to 12 month process and it costs a good amount of money. But if they received it, we're in the system. Um, I'm, I'm being represented by, we are by an international firm. They're very good at what they do. And uh, so that process has started. The states recognize it. Uh, they deposited my check, and so we're going through the motions. I've got 40 years of environmental issues. They've watched this site. They know this site. Um, so that helped to have a lot of that information. But uh, again, I've got a firm, engineering firm, that's, that's taken me through that process. We typically don't touch brownfield sites. So I just happen to like these owners and see an opportunity and um, a need in that, in that area. So that's kind of important. Yes, sir. Okay. Is this a full blown conclusion already? Or are you just going through the formality? No, I, 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 let me answer that. Still this way. Still has to pass the council. Um, it's a rezoning been, been, petition. Right. Yeah, I've been doing this a long time, and I will tell you that until I see the hands go up at the city council meeting in April, nothing. Oh, no, 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 no. The hands that would go up haven't even seen this thing yet. No, no, this is not, this is not show and tell. This is, this is a genuine attempt on our part to try, I'm, I'm written down four or five things here. We're meeting with the city staff on Thursday to go over all of their comments before we make any changes to the plan. This is an input into a live process that doesn't end until the city council votes. And I would never try to tell you ahead of time what the city council is going to do because I've been surprised. <laughs> no, sir, it is not a small uh, Do you have an, a, 
aesthetic, what it's gonna what it's gonna look like? Are you planning to side these with an aluminum right. siding or you further ado. These are these are some examples and Keith you might want to describe these. Well these are just garden style products, but this is this is pretty much what the design we're looking at. These have elevators and these do not have elevators. What we have this is just the concept. This, these are existing apartments. Look, I mean, we're 